Hi everybody, a lot of you couldn't make it today and that's fine, it happens sometimes. We're all on these crazy schedules with um, work and school and Zoom meetings for everybody. I know it's kind of difficult right now. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and record our story, The Man Who Took the Indoors Out, and I hope you enjoy it and can tune in and watch it uh, when you're able. Okay, we're gonna start now. This is one of my favorites, actually. I'm not gonna start now. I have to tell you, this is one of my favorites. Um, when I was a kid, I read this, and I loved it so much and remembered it as an adult that I actually ordered it recently. I don't think it's even in print anymore, but you can look it up. Um, check with some of your local bookstores. I have a few that I love. Um, we love Warwick's in La Jolla, um, and we love um, Mysterious Galaxy, which is now in Point Loma. Anyway, I hope that you will enjoy our story today, The Man Who Took the Indoors Out. Can you see? There was an old man who was named Bellwood Bouse. He loved all the things in his very large house. At the start of each day, with a duster and broom, he carefully cleaned every well-furnished room. In his white wicker rocker, Outdoors in the air, Bellwood said to himself, Now it does not seem fair while I sit out here in the clear morning light. My wonderful things are inside and shut tight. It does not seem good and it does not seem kind, but I have an astounding idea in my mind. The sofa, the footstools, the tables and chairs, the lamps and the pictures, the pillows and pears, the drawers with their dresser, the mirrors and drapes, an upright piano, a bunch of wax grapes, the bed and the quilt and the clocks one by one bounced out of the house in the warm noonday sun. The cups and the platters, the spoons and the bowls, a cookie jar filled up with cinnamon rolls, the ladles and pots and the kettle for tea, a sink and a stove that had set themselves free. The broom and the duster, all this and much more came leaping and tumbling out through the door. The old man exclaimed, what a jubilant day, we will have a parade, Bellwood Bouse shows the way. A preposterous sort of procession began, some things went skipping and other things ran, through the forest and fields, all that fine afternoon, while the upright piano was playing a tune. They marched to the village, and when they were there, they danced in a circle around the town square. The folk came to watch in a curious crowd, they giggled and chuckled, they laughed long and loud. Three cheers for old Bouse, someone said with a shout, the man who has taken the indoors out. On and on went the indoors with Bouse in the lead, but early that evening those things gathered speed. Do slow down, Bellwood cried. Are we running a race? I cannot continue this breathtaking pace. Still the indoors rushed on, feeling happy and free. It paid no attention to old Bellwood's plea. In a great cloud of dust, it ran far out of sight, leaving Bouse all alone in the darkening night. The indoors ran out to the edge of the land, way down near the shore where it strolled on the sand. The sofa and tables, the bed and the clocks played hide and go seek on some barnacled rocks. The pans and the platters, each teacup and dish went out for a swim like a school of odd fish. All of Bellwood's possessions, well out of his reach, Watching the waves wash the bright, moonlit beach. From deep wooded valleys to high mountain peaks, Bells called, Come back, dears, for many long weeks. His coat was in tatters and wet from the rain. His cries became echoes, but all was in vain. Oh, Bellwood, poor Bellwood, the old man named Bouse. He gave up the search and returned to his house. The white rick wicker rocker was all that he had. He sat in it feeling incredibly sad. A year passed and Baus, in the blackest of glooms, walked up and down through his dark, empty rooms. He climbed to the top of his uppermost tower to watch at the window for hour after hour. He said how tremendously grateful I'd be if only my indoors would come home to me. One morning in winter, Bouse looked down below. Something was moving out there in the snow. He heard distant music, a soft, gentle song. My piano, Bouse shouted, I could not be wrong. As he rushed down the stairs, running terribly fast, he cried, has my indoors returned home at last? 
Up the hill to the house came a line of lost things. The kettle was bent and the chairs had loose springs. The mirrors were cracked and the teacups were chipped. The tables were scratched and the sofa was ripped. Poor dears, you are damaged, said Bouse, but who cares? I'm so glad you are back. I will soon make repairs. I hope, Bellwood said, that your journey was fun. Now come in for your life and the outdoors is done. The exhausted indoors, doing as it was told, stumbled out into the house to get out of the cold. Said Bouse as he hurried to lock his front door, I will not let my indoors run loose any more. And then to his rocker, Bouse, ma Bouse made a deep bow. White wicker, he said, come and dance with me now. So there on the slope of that snow-covered hill, in spite of the blizzard, ignoring the chill, the rocker danced all around and about with the man who had taken the indoors out. That is the end of our book today, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see all of you soon. Remember that Thursday is our reading time for second grade and up, um, and we will continue with Half Magic. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.